-hmm. Are you ever going to have kids? I don't yes. think so. Guys, I like, see, I'm about to be 39 in a month. And so it was like a six months ago was when it was time to get my eggs frozen if I was going to do it. Everyone was kind of like, it's already too late, but you might as well try. And I went to go do it. And I was just so emotional about it because I knew I was just doing it for a future husband who refused to adopt. Like a guy I hadn't met yet in the future would not <laughs> adopt. And so I was, get, I was paying all this money and doing all these things to myself because I don't mind adopting. And I've never really won kids. I was always kind of waiting for that instinct to kick in where I want to have my own. And it's just never... I never cared about it. And that's just my my thing. You know, most people do. And so... I just was crying to the doctor and saying, I'm just doing this because of the patriarchy and because there's some man who wants his own DNA in a baby and I don't even care. I'll let him pick out a, a, an egg. It will look at a book of models and we'll pick out an egg donor. I don't, and she was like, don't do this. And so, <laughs> I, um, so I didn't do it. So it's kind of, um, it's an interesting thing to, I don't think I want them and I don't think I'm going to have them. It's still at an age where I could, figure out something and there is always adoption if I want to do it down the road but right. there also is the thing of like because I don't think I'm gonna have kids I just spent thirteen thousand dollars on Taylor Swift tickets and didn't blink an eye <laughs> like it's like yeah. I know that's what that is sounds that like how much they cost dude I, I'm the biggest Taylor Swift fan that you're gonna find um and so it and I don't, I don't have a, I, I drive my mom's old shitty car. I live in an apartment that I rent that in St. Louis. I don't spend money on anything. And so that wasn't me bragging about some big ticket item. This is the most I've ever spent on anything. Then they did. I mean, they were on StubHub. They were originally, what, $400, but people sell them to sell them. And then it's, uh, I got oh. two tickets, $13,000. But I really, I felt so much guilt about Which, buying it. But then I go, I don't have a college fund that I need to put into. I don't need to give my daughter go. swim lessons or like, let me just spend some of this, this for month. you. Uh, and now, were uh, they good seats? Front row. Were they good seats? <laughs> oh, okay. There you go. There you go. Yes. So no, that's, we, that's hey, what I was paying get for. It. You get it. Yeah. Bree and I, we, yeah, we get it. We spent almost that for the Eagles game and That's we were Super Bowl. fourth row for Super Bowl. And so yes, okay. and we had mom, actual mom guilt about it, but we were like, okay. We get like a paid post for Super Bowl week. Yes. And it's a certain price. And that means these tickets are meant to be. And then we got one and we're like, well, we're just going to do it. And we we're like, our kids can go to community college instead of like yeah. a D1 <laughs> school. <laughs> Don't you find that when you're your most confident and you're your most secure, that's your best performance, whether you've practiced the most or not, it's like, it kind of comes down to that ultimately. Always. Oh. And I always feel like when we're super confident, like when we, we did a live show last week, a live podcast show in San Francisco, we almost become oversharers because yeah. we're so confident with ourselves and our sexuality and our families. So we overshare everything. And then her and I might get a little anxiety days after and we're like, yeah. do we overshare too much? Were we too sexual? Well, for me, it's, it's not that. I think what it is is when you, and you know this, Nikki, is when you start to feel the energy from the live crowd and the minute they laugh at one thing, you're like, oh, so that's what you like. I said Ooh, vagina. Yeah. So I'm we're going to get in more. deep. Yeah. yeah. We're going to yes. get deep in the vaginas. And then, and I think that's what it is. People love the sex talk. And yeah. then you just go full on deep and then, Artem's like, I can't believe she just said that. I'm just sharing the sex life. He's right there. And all the things happen. You're but so you, right. You, you know, you lose control. And because you want to yeah. give them what they want, you, you feel what works. And I think that it is, you know, that I struggle with it because I am so open about sex. So I've always felt like I'm not just doing it because it's the easy laugh or it's the easy way it is though. Let's be honest. Like talking about sex, saying shocking things, that's going to get people's reactions to be, they're going to laugh harder or have more of a response. So maybe it's a little bit easy, but I don't, I don't know that it's that easy to talk frankly about sex, whether or not it comes out. Um, for, I, I think what you're able to do, whether it, you didn't mean to say it or not, the fact that it came out, not a lot of people have that ability to do it. And I do think that whether or not it's you or me trying to give them what they want and maybe oversharing, and it can be kind of like, TMI sometimes like why did you do that I think it is important because so many people don't talk about that stuff to anyone yeah, they don't right. hear, they don't they don't even have best girlfriends that talk about it. I think that's what podcasts are so good a uh, female podcast where we can talk about this stuff because it makes women have uh, feel like they have friends that they're able to talk about this stuff with and I think 
it just you can't sometimes I, I try to back away from sex stuff because I think even you, I, I'm sensitive a little in what you're saying is like were we too sexual because people can write you off when you're too sexual totally. she's just using that as a crush a crutch she's not really that smart she's not really that talented they're just showing skin because and maybe showing skin because I'm a little insecure of my talent it doesn't mean I'm not talented it just this is a thing that culturally I've been programmed to do but it doesn't and then I, and then I back away from the sex stuff and I go, wait, they're winning. This is where this is right. I, I get shamed. And now we all don't talk about sex stuff. You know what happens when you don't talk about sex stuff and little girls don't know about sex and they walk into their first sexual encounter, not knowing the ins and outs of what, what is to be expected, what isn't to be expected. Weird stuff, stuff happens, uncomfortable stuff happens. And they don't know that it's not what's supposed to happen. Right. I, and the emotions of it, because I think that's yes. such a big play. And especially, you know, when, Think of like those emotions when you're in your teens and then your 20s and your 30s. Everything's always different, even, you know, 40s and so on. Um, but that's why I also think it's so important to openly talk about it because of the emotional part of it. Like right. when shit does get weird, like, am I the only one feeling this way? Yes. Like, am I, you know, and like, I want to say no. Or also some people are super sexual and some people can care less if they have sex with someone. Yes. So then those are all those feelings too. Like, shoot, like, am I normal? So that's why I, I do feel it's so important. And the shit's funny. Shit's funny. It's so it's fun funny. to hear. Yeah. It's yes. so fun to hear people's stories. I yes. Like, I love it. I want to hear I do more. Too. Like, I'll yeah. stare at people and I'll admit, I will visualize them having sex. Cause I'm yes. so curious. I'm like, yes. Wow, how does that work? Or like oh, a couple holding like hands. Yes. Yeah. I totally think of that too. <laughs> Whenever I see a pregnant woman, I'm like, she got cummed in. Like I'm yeah. like thinking of like the nastiest thing she was doing. And it's like she she's just like this woman at the grocery store. I'm like, I know she got rode, like she was riding a dick hard. <laughs> like and she's yeah. like this like sweet mom, but it's like but that's what's so funny about sex is that we oh. all exist because of it. We all yeah. think you know, unless you're asexual, which is a whole other thing, you think about it all the time. And if you're asexual, yeah. you also think about how you're not thinking about it all the time. So sex is right. constantly affecting everything we do all the time. And it's something that we're not talking about. And I think that's why I gravitated towards comedy and um, was because I was like, wow, this thing that I've always wanted to talk about that people used to look at me weird when I would ask questions about or talk openly about a thing that I was scared of. Let's go back to the scared thing. I didn't have sex till I was 21. I didn't kiss a boy until I was 17. I didn't have a boyfriend until I was 24. I was scared of sex, scared of boys, fascinated by it, loved watching porn, loved looking it up on the computer, loved reading about it and hearing about it, wanted to hear everything about my friends' lives. I didn't get my period till I was like 15, but I like already knew how to put in a tampon because I would just ask my friends about like, I never wore pads. Like my first period, I was just like put in a tampon like an old grizzled like sailor woman. Like I, because I had gleaned all this information, but I was terrified of sex. And I think that's what I was terrified of it because I didn't know anything. And I think right as else. soon as I was able to, you know, I discovered comedy and then I was like, oh, I discovered kind of female comics that talked about sex openly. And I was like, this is so cool that you get now all the things that I've always wanted to talk about. I can get paid to do it. I'm not paid yet, but like in the beginning, people would like me because of it. it was just so cool. And it's it's just freeing. And I just you know, it, but I still get hurt when people write me off for being just a sex comic or they say, don't watch her special with your kids around. I'm like, why are you watching comedy specials with your kids? Why do you need to yeah. say that? Right. You know, all my imposter syndrome stuff comes in of like, you did find an easy route. You aren't you aren't smart enough to be a clean comic. Clean comics have to work harder. So you're actually a lazy, easy, take the easy road um raunchy. You like to offend people. You like to hurt people's feelings. I start to go into this place of like. You're just a selfish, lazy, um, me, me, me. I want attention. Like I, I, I buy into all of what they, what I think they think I am. And I know I'm not that at my core, but it does rob me of, of that confidence. And I, I struggle with it all the time. I mean, I think uh, listening to you guys and your podcast, I, I relate with so much. I think that people probably project a lot onto you of being so confident, so badass because you are in all these ways, but I'm sure you also struggle with just even hearing you talk a little bit about just second guessing things you said, like you said the other night, like oversharing things or 
oh, that one line, why did I say it this way? And I couldn't have done it that way. Those little things that like haunt you or, you know, let's talk about the worst thing that can hold us back. And I'm sure you guys are no um, stranger to it is comparing yourself to other people and what they're doing. I think that's, that for me is my number one thing that holds me back is comparing myself to others and predicting what people are going to say when I do something that's a little out of the box, how I'm going to be made fun of. Yeah. Fearing that I- someone's going to zo- like screenshot it and start a girl's chat about like how, like, oh my God, look how like she thinks she's hot. Like, honey, you're a comedian. Stop trying to be a model. You're old. Look at her skin. Look at her. Look at what work she's had done. And you know why I think that? Because I do that to women. <laughs> like, it's, <laughs> it starts with me. So I'm trying to be, I'm trying not to gossip as much. And that's, that's just good. something to learn too late in life, that that is just like such a sickness. I would consider us maybe not pushovers, but we were just too nice. We were very nice. Yes. And I didn't want to be the dickhead in business. So I was like, I'm going to take the different route. And it's not even nice. that you didn't want to. You but then just, you get fucked yeah. when you're nice. Right? And you also, I mean, let's use the word, you, you're divas, but but you don't want to be a, you don't want to be known as a diva, as a bitch, as someone who like gets talked about as like, oh, she came in here and just bossed. You just want to be, you want people to like you. Right. Right. Have a good experience with you. Totally. Because if we all have a bad day, we're bitches. Everyone yes. else can have a bad day, but if we have a bad day, then like all of a sudden you're labeled a bitch. Well, you're labeled high and I've mm-hmm. I've always wanted to be a bitch in that way. Like <laughs> yes. I'm like, can I just be a bitch before like someone crosses the line? Because I'm usually only a bitch <laughs> once that line's crossed. I want to be yeah, a yeah. bitch before it. Your 39 year old self is saying that, yeah. which is the beauty. I want to be a bitch, which is the beauty of getting older. Is you stop caring. You don't care about yes. people's and, feelings. Right. That is the greatest thing about getting it's older. It's the greatest thing. I'm it just like, true. this is how I feel. Game over. Yes. No one's going to change my mind. 